गौरंगी वृंदानेश्वरी ऋषभानु सुत प्रणमा हरि नारायण नरम चेव सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर श्री राधे गुरु गुरुकानंद भगवान की तो श्रीमद भागवतम की हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा राइट हरे कृष्णा गजेंद्र हरे कृष्णा अजय हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा राइट शुरू करते हैं अपन कल हम लोग श्लोक ट्वेंटी सिक्स पढ़ रहे थे ऑफ चैप्टर ट्वेंटी एट एंड दिस चैप्टर इज अबाउट द अपीरेंस ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु या व्हेन महाराज पृथ्वी इज डूइंग द अश्वमेघ यज्ञ आफ्टर द नाइनटी नाइन्थ यज्ञ या लॉर्ड विष्णु अपीयर अलोंग विद इंद्रदेव एंड एंड लॉर्ड विष्णु ट्रांसेंडेंटल मैसेज इज व्हाट वी आर रीडिंग इन प्रीवियस श्लोक्स एंड आफ्टर द ट्रांसेंडेंटल मैसेज व्हाट वी आर रीडिंग राइट नाउ इज महाराज पृथु इज ग्लोरिफाइंग लॉर्ड विष्णु इज वॉट वी आर रीडिंग राइट so yesterday we are reading shlok 26 like my dear highly glorified lord if one in the association of pure devotees <clears throat> hears even once the glories of your activities he does not unless he is nothing but an animal give up the association of devotees for no intelligent person would be so careless as to leave their association so basically prithu maharaj what he is saying he is glorifying lord vishnu saying like even if once somebody hears the activities right which is glorifying the lord supreme personality of godhead then people don't want to leave that association right and he is saying the perfection of chanting and hearing about your glories was accepted even by the goddesses of fortune who desire to hear of your unlimited activities and transcendental glories right so even shri lakshmi ji yeah who is the goddess of fortune here says shri yeah gun sangrahe chha means she also desires to hear the unlimited activities and transcendental glories of lord shri vishnu yeah is what prithu maharaj is now saying to lord vishnu yeah <clears throat> so we'll read from the next shlok 27 tarun then you want me to read yeah adha bhaje tva tva khil purushottam gunalayam padma kareva lalasam apyava यो रे कपस्तीस्तो कलीनर्ये सैतकृतवचरेण कथान 
Now I wish to engage in the service of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and to serve just like the Goddess of Fortune who carries a lotus flower in her hand. Because his Lordship, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the reservoir of all transcendental qualities. I am afraid that the Goddess of Fortune and I would quarrel because both of us would be attentively engaged in the same service. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so what Prithu Maharaj is saying is, after seeing Lord Vishnu and hearing his transcendental message, he just wants to engage in the Atha Bhaje Tva Akhil Purusho Tamam. Right? He wants to just engage in the lotus feet service of the lotus feet of Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he's also saying at the same time, wants to serve just like the goddess of fortune. Yeah? He's saying a Padma Kareva Lal said, that is goddess of fortune who is care. Yeah? who carries a lotus flower in her hand. And he's also saying that the Lordship is the reservoir of all transcendental qualities. So, yeah, gunalayam. So, <clears throat> and then, you know, in that spirit, he's saying that he wants to dedicate it to the service so much that he's afraid, goddess of fortune, and I would quarrel because both of us would be attentively engaged in the same service. Yeah. So that's what Prithu Maharaj is saying. <clears throat> and a nice purport, but let's read the last one, uh, Ajay. Sure. Prithu Maharaj desired to serve the Lord with the goddess of fortune, but this desire does not mean that he was situated on the platform of Madhurya Ras. The goddess of fortune is engaged in the service of the Lord in the rest of Madhurya, conjugal love. Although her position is on the chest of the Lord, the goddess of fortune in her position as a devotee takes pleasure in serving the lotus feet of the God or the Lord. Prithu Maharaj was thinking only of the lotus feet of the Lord because he is on the platform of Das Ras or Ras. Das Siras, or Servitorship of the Lord. From the next verse, we learn that Prithu Maharaj was thinking of the goddess of fortune as the universal mother, Jagat Mata. Consequently, there was, on, there was no question of his competing with her on the platform of Madhurya Ras. Nonetheless, he feared that she might take offense at his engage engaging in the service of the Lord. This suggests that in, in the absolute world, there is sometimes competition between servitors and in the service of the Lord, but such competition is without malice. In the vacant world, it is as if, if a devotee excels in the service of the Lord, others do not become envious of his excellent service, but rather aspire to come to the platform of that service. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Jagad Jananyam Jagadish Veshasham Shadevayat Karmani Nahe Samihitam Karoshi Falag Vapayur Udin Vatsalah Sure Sadhishanya Abhiratasya Kim Taya My dear Lord of the Universe, the Goddess of Fortune Lakshmi is the mother of the universe. And yet, I think that she may be angry with me because of my intruding upon her service and acting on that very platform to which she is so much attached. Yet I am hopeful that even though there is some misunderstanding, you will take my part, for you are very much inclined to the poor and you always magnify even insignificant service unto you. Therefore, even though she becomes angry, I think that there is no harm for you because you are so self-sufficient that you can do without her. So like in the spirit of doing the service to the lotus feet of Supreme Personality of Godhead, Maharaj Prithu is saying all this. Yeah. <clears throat> Continue reading, Ajay. Sure. Bhajan, 
भजन त्यत एव साधो मया गुण विभ्र मोदय भवत भवत पदान अनुस्मरणा धृते संता निमित्त मन्य गुवन विद्या विद्या है पद्म है great saintly persons who are always liberated take to your devotional service because only by devotional service can one be relieved from the illusion of material existence oh my lord there is no reason for the liberated souls to take shelter at your lotus feet except that such souls are constantly thinking of your feet can you scroll down and this hari krishna Yeah. Hare Krishna. Basically, what is being mentioned here, right, is the saintly persons who are always situated in the devotional service. Yeah. So, Emat, Evu Sadhu. And why are they situated? Because only because of that they can be relieved from the illusions of material existence from Maya. Yeah. It says here, Maya Gun Vibram Udayam. So that's the only way. The way is devotional service, and these sons are constantly pada padano shmranam, like they are constantly thinking of the lotus feet of the supreme personality of Godhead. Is what Prithu Maharaj is saying, and again a nice purport. Let's read this tarun. <clears throat> so the karmis are generally engaged in fruitive activities for material body comforts. The gyanis, however, are disgusted with searching after material comforts. They understand that they have nothing to do with this material world. Being spirit souls. After self-realization, the jnanis who are actually mature in their knowledge must surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. Bahu naam jana naam ante. Self-realization is not complete unless one comes to the devotional platform. Therefore, it is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam that those who are atma rama, self-satisfied, are freed from all contaminations of the material modes of nature. As long as one is affected by the modes of material nature, especially by rajas and rajas and tamas, he will be very greedy and lusty and will therefore engage in hard tasks, laboring all day and night. Such false egoism carries one from one species of life into another perpetually and there is no rest in any species of life. The jnani understands this fact and therefore ceases to work and takes to karm sanyas. Yeah. So what is being explained is <clears throat> like the karmis and the jnanis, right? They keep going into this world after one species of life into another without any rest. But after self-realization, some of the jnanis actually mature in their knowledge. And then what happens is they surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord, and that is when the self-realization is complete. Otherwise, it's not complete, right? They still remain in the material world, is what is mentioned. Yeah. So let's continue reading this, Tarun. Yet this is not actually the platform of satisfaction. After self-realization. The material wisdom of the jnani leads him to the shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Then he is satisfied only in contemplating the lotus feet of the Lord constantly. Patu Maharaj therefore concluded that liberated persons taking to the devotional path have acquired the ultimate goal of life. If liberation were the end of in itself, there would be no question for liberated persons taking to devotional service. In other words, the transcendental bliss derived from self-realization. Known as Atmananda, is very insignificant in the presence of the bliss derived from devotional service to the lotus feet of the Lord. Prithu Maharaja therefore 
concluded that he would simply hear of the glories of the Lord constantly and thus engage his mind upon the lotus feet of the Lord. That is the highest perfection of life. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so the most important fact mentioned here and Prithu Maharaj is you know, like he's basically ruling the whole planet, he concludes that he would simply hear of the glories of the Lord constantly and does engage his mind upon the lotus feet of the Lord. And how do we engage our mind on the lotus feet of the Lord? Right? How do we serve the Lord is by like nine different ways, Smiranam, Kirtanam, things like that, doing the Japas, or reading Srimad Bhagavatam, all Bhagavad Gita, right? Hearing about the glories of Supreme Personality of Godhead. And what is mentioned here is that is the highest perfection of life. Right? The highest perfection is not anything else, but the devotional service is what is mentioned here. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Rasikshya Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Mani Giram Tejagatam Bi Mohinim Varam Vishni Sveti Bhajan Tiyamatha Yata Vachanu Tanyata Tantya Yadi Tejano Sitaha Katham Punaha Karmam Karoti Mohitaha My dear Lord, what you have said to your unalloyed devotees to certainly very much bewildering. The allurement you offer in the Vedas are certainly not suitable for the pure devotees. People in general bound by the sweet word of the Vedas engage themselves again and again in fruitive activities in more by the result of their actions. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. So what is being mentioned here is Whatever is written in Vedas from the fruitive activities perspective is not suitable for pure devotees. Right? Because pure devotees don't wish all the materialistic pleasures. Right? All they want is doing the service in the to the lotus feet of the Lord. Because in Vedas, what is mentioned is right, like if you do this kind of havan, or if you do this kind of ritual, if you do that, then you get all these benefits. But then all these benefits are essentially the materialistic benefits. Yeah. <clears throat> and but everyone gets attracted by that. It says Katham Punah Karma Karoti Mohitahe is like basically for the those fruitive activities, yeah, and be based on the actions, the results of the actions, which are positive, right? People get attracted to that and they keep doing that, but that is not what pure devotees are asking for is what is being mentioned here, right? Pure devotees are asking for the service to the Lord. Ajay? Tvan, tvan maya, maya yad, yadvaha jan ish khandito yadant yadan, yadanya dashast Ritatmano Abuddha Yatha Chared Bal Hitam Pitasvayam Tatha Tome Harsi Nasami Hitum. My Lord, due to your illusion energy, all living beings in the material world would have forgotten their real constitutional position, and out of ignorance, they, they are always desirous of material happiness. Mm -hmm in the form of society, friendship, and love. Therefore, please do not ask me to take some material benefits from you. But as a father not waiting for his son's demand, does everything for the benefit of the son, please bestow upon me whatever you think best for me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So if you remember, in the previous shlok, Lord Vishnu, after giving the transcendental knowledge, he is asking for any benedictions to Maharaj Prithu. Right? So he is asking Maharaj Prithu to take any benediction and ask for anything. So in response to that, right, Prithu Maharaj is glorifying Lord Vishnu and then he is saying that please don't ask me to take some material benefits from you. 
Yeah. And and why not? Because that is out of ignorance. Right? We always want to be materialistically happy because we have forgotten our original constitutional position, which is in the service of the Lord. Right? And we are just trying to be happy in this material world. So what he is saying is, but as a father, not waiting for the son's demand, right? He says, Yatha chare the bal hitam pita shvayam. Like a father is always looking for the benefit of the son, even if son is not asking for it. That's what Prithu Maharaj is saying, that as a father does everything for the benefit of the son, please bestow upon me whatever you think is the best for me. Yeah? So whatever you think is the best for me is what he is asking to, asking from Lord Krishna. Yeah? <clears throat> Again, a nice purport, uh, Tarun. It is the duty of the son to depend upon his father without asking anything from him. The good son has faith that the father knows best how to benefit him. Similarly, a pure devotee does not ask anything from the Lord for material benefit, nor does he ask anything for spiritual benefit. The pure devotee is fully surrendered unto the lotus feet of the Lord. The Lord takes charge of him, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 18.66. Aham Tom Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Siyami. The Father knows the necessities of the Son and supplies them. And the Supreme Lord knows the necessities of the living entities and supplies them sumptuously. Therefore, the, the Isopanishad states that everything in this material world is complete. Purnam Idham. The difficulty is that due to forget, forgetfulness, the living entities create unnecessary demands and entangle themselves in material activities. The result is that there is no end to material activities, life after life. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so what happens with the material activities is becomes the law of karma, right? So every action having reaction and then we have the law of karma and then that carries on life after life, right? That's where we keep getting the results of the karma and then we can keep repeating all this karmas, right? So what is being mentioned here? Ajay? Sure. Um, before us, there, there are varieties of living entities and everyone is in, entangled in transmigrations and activities. Our duty is simply to surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead and let him take charge for he knows what is good for us. Prithu Maharaj therefore tells the Lord that as Supreme Father, he may elect to bestow whatever he considers beneficial for Prithu Maharaj. That is perfect position of the living entity. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us his, his shikshastaka na Na dhanam, na, na janam, na gyanam, na, na sundarin, kavitan va jagat isha kamai, mama jan, janmani jan, jabanuswari, bhav, bhavatad bhaktir, I O Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor I have any desire to enjoy a beautiful woman, nor do I want any number of followers. I only want your causeless devotional service in my life, birth after birth. The conclusion is that pure devotee should not aspire after any material benefit from devotional service, nor should be enamored by fruitive activities or philosophical speculations. He should always be engaged favorably in the service of the Lord that is the highest perfection of life. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So again and again it's mentioned the highest perfection of life is to engage in the devotional service 
without aspiring any material benefit. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Rina Ji. Hare Krishna, Vya. Hare Krishna, Vya. What are you? Ji. Maitre Uvaj. Ityadi Rajen Nutah Sa Vishwa Drik Tamaha Rajan Mai Bhakti Rastu Te Distir Drishi Dhir Mai Te Kritayaya Maya Madhyam Tarati Sma Dustijam. The great sage Maitre continued by saying that the Lord, the seer of the universe, after hearing Prithu Maharaj's prayer, addressed the king, My dear king, may you always be blessed by engaging in my devotional service. Only by such purity of purpose, as you yourself very intelligently express, can one, can one cross over the insurmountable illusory energy of Maya. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, yeah. So as we saw, right, Lord Vishnu giving the transcendental knowledge, then Prithu Maharaj glorifying Lord Vishnu and then he's asking Lord Vishnu only for the devotional service, right? And he's not asking for any other benedictions. So then Lord Vishnu himself is saying that may you always be blessed by engaging in my devotional service. And then he's saying that only by such purity of purpose, yeah, one can cross over the insurmountable illusory energy of Maya. Maya Madhyam Tartisma to stay jam. Like only way to cross this over is by devotional service, right? It also says here, this is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> Wherein the Lord claims that the illusory energy is insurmountable. No one can transcend transcend the illusory energy of Maya by fruitive activity speculative philosophy or mystic yoga, the only means for trans transcending illusory energy is devotional service. As the Lord himself states, Mam evye prapadhyante mayam itam taranti te. If one wants to cross over the ocean of material existence, there is no alternative <coughs> than to take to devotional service. A devotee therefore should not care for any material position. Whether in heaven or in hell, a pure devotee should always engage in the service of the Lord, for that is the real occupation. Simply by sticking to that position, one can overcome the stringent laws of material nature. Yeah, that's the way to cross over the illusory energy of mind. Tarun? <clears throat> Tattvam Kuru Mayadistham Apramate Pajapate Mad Adesa Karo Lokaha Sarva Vyatra Pyoti Shobhanam My dear King, O Protector of the Citizens, henceforward be very careful to execute my orders and not be misled by anything. Anyone who lives in that way simply carrying out my orders faithfully will always find good fortune all over the world. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So that's what Lord Vishnu is telling Ritu Maharaj. Yeah. Again. <clears throat> sure. Maitre Vaj. Iti Van It Vanya Se Radarshi Pratinanda Nandyarth Nandyarth Vadvacha Pujito Anugrihit Vainam Gantu Chakre Achuto Matim. The great Saint Maitreya told Vidur, the Supreme Personality of Godhead amply appreciated the meaningful prayers of Maharaj Prithu. Thus, after being properly worshipped by the king, the Lord blessed him and decided to depart. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, of course, and all this is being told by Maitre. Yeah. And Maitre Muni is answering to Mahatma Vidur, right? Because he's asking question about the remember descendants of Dhru Maharaj. So that's where uh, Maitre Muni is now telling about Maharaj Prithu. Yeah. 
शिक्षा प्रभु जी देवर्षि पिति गंधर्व सिद्ध चारण पन्न गहार सोमर्तया खगा भूता केश यज्ञेश्वर धीयराजाजलि भक्ति सभाजिता यो सर्वे वैकुंठानुगस्तः King Prithu worshipped the demigods, the great sage, the inhabitants of Pitri Lok, the inhabitants of Gandharv Lok, and those Siddha Lok, Gandharvas, Gandharv Charan Charan Lok, Pannag Lok, Kinnar Lok, Apsara Lok, the early earthly planets and planets of the birds. He also worshipped many other living entities who presented themselves in the sacrificial arena. With folded hands, he worshipped all these. He well as as well as the supreme personality of Godhead and the personal associate of the Lord by offering sweet words and as much wealth as possible. After this function, they all went back to their respective abodes, following in the footsteps steps of the Lord Vishnu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So the whole yagya is going on, and Maharaj Prithu, of course, is uh, worshiping all the uh, different loks, vasis present here. Yeah. And actually, again, a nice purport. So let's read this, uh, Rinaji. In modern so-called scientific society, the idea is very prevalent that there is no life on other planets, but the that only on this earth do living entities with intelligence and scientific knowledge exist. The Vedic literatures, however, do not accept this foolish theory. The followers of Vedic wisdom are fully aware of various planets inhabited by very varieties of living entities such as the demigods, the sages, the pitas, the gantharvas, the pannagas, the kinnaras, the charans, and the Siddhas and the Apsaras. The Vedas give information that in all the all planets, not only within this material sky, but also in spiritual sky, there are varieties of living entities. Although all these living entities are of one spiritual nature, in quality the same as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they have varieties of bodies due to the embodiment of the spirit soul by the eight material elements namely earth, water, fire, air, sky, mind, intelligence, and false ego. In the spiritual world, however, there is no such distinction between the body and the embodied. In the material world, distinctive features are manifested in different types of bodies in the various planets. We have full information from the Vedic literature that in each and every planet, both material and spiritual, there are living entities of varied intelligence. The earth is one of the planets of the Bhurloka planetary system. There are six planetary systems above Bhurloka and seven planetary systems below it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, as you remember, we have always been reading you know, 14 planets, right? The earth is seventh. So we have six above us and seven, uh, seven below us, right? So that's what is mentioned here. Let's continue reading this, Tarun. Tarun. Ajay. Therefore, the entire universe is known as Chaturdash Bhuvan. Indicating that it has 14 different planetary system beyond the planetary system. Uh, Gajendra, the... Sorry, I had to step away. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Beyond the planetary system in the material sky, there is another sky which is known as Parvarma or the spiritual sky, where there are spiritual planets. The inhabitants of these planets engage in varieties of loving services unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which include different 
rasas or relationships known as dasiras, sakshiras, vatsalaras, madhuriras, and above all, parkatiras. The parkatiras or parama love is prevalent in Krishna Lok, wherein Lord Krishna lives. The planet is also called Gokul Vindavan, and although Lord Krishna lives there perpetually, he also expands himself in millions and trillions of forms. In one of such forms, he appears on this material planet in a particularly planet known as Vindavan Dham, where he displays his original pastime of Gokul Vindavan Dham in the spiritual sky in order to attract the conditioned souls back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, yeah. So... Uh, the infallible supreme personality of Godhead, having captivated the minds of the king and the priests who were present, returned to his abode in the spiritual sky. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, the Lord Vishnu. He goes back to his abode. Uh, is what is mentioned here. Uh, Tarun. Uh, Tarun here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Shiksha, bro. Uh, Adrishtaya namaskritya nirpasthanda shatatmane Abhyaktayacha devanam evaya sapuram yayau. King Prithu then offered his respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of God, who is the Supreme Lord of the demigods. All, although not an object of material vision, the Lord revealed himself to the sight of Maharaj Prithu. After Offering obeisances to the Lord, the king returned to his home. Okay, so after, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So after doing the yagya, after getting transcendental knowledge from Lord Vishnu himself and offering obeisances to the Lord, king also is returning back to his place. Yeah, and it says here the <clears throat> Rinaji. The Supreme Lord is not visible to material eyes, but when the material senses are inclined to the transcendental loving service of the Lord and are thus purified, the Lord reveals himself to the vision of the devotee. Avyakta means unmanifested. Although the material world is the creation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is unmanifested to material eyes. Maharaj Prithu, however, developed spiritual eyes by his pure devotional service. Here, therefore, the Lord is described as Sandar Sitatma, Sandar Sitatma, for he reveals himself to the vision of the devotee, although he is not visible to ordinary eyes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So how do you get darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, right? Not with the ordinary vision. Right, but what is being clearly mentioned is the vision of the devotee. Yeah, when the devotional service becomes pure, when the material senses are inclined to the transcendental loving service of the Lord and thus are purified, then what happens? Right, the Lord reveals Himself to the vision of the devotee, is what is being mentioned here. Right, so it is not that we cannot get darshan of Supreme Personality of Godhead. But we need to get the vision for that. And the vision we get is by doing the devotional service. The vision of the devotee. Yeah, That's when you can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah, Very clearly mentioned here. So thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purpose of the 4th Kento 20th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Lord Vishnu's appearance in the sacrificial arena of Maharaj Prithu. Yeah, So very nice uh, Nicely <clears throat> described uh, Dhru Maharaj's descendants, right? Up to Prithu Maharaj. So, Bhagavatam ki.
Yeah. 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 So again, this week we are going to continuously hear um Damodras come. Yeah. So we'll hear the Damodras come around 8 to 10 minutes. And then we'll see you tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern time and 8.30 India time.
Krishna, it's always nice to hear Dhamadars come, right? Especially Kartik month, even the final days of Kartik month are supposed to be one more and more auspicious. So it's really nice to do that. <laughs> and really good to also read Srimad Bhagavatam during Kartik month, so which we did. So that was really nice and auspicious. Right? Krishna will see you tomorrow at 10 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. India time. Yeah? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna.